Hi guys, it's me Chazzer HD and welcome to another episode of the podcast where today me and Neb are going to preview the next Grand Prix in 2019, the 2019 Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Now of course, uh, last weekend was a very difficult weekend. We're not going to really talk about it because it's not a weekend we want to remember. So we're going to mainly focus on the weekend to come this weekend at Monza and it should be... After another great race at Spa, it should be another very good race because the midfield is very close and the top teams also look a bit close as well. Let me now bring in Nib and uh, welcome him to the podcast. Nib, um, how are you doing after, yeah, what was a difficult last uh, seven days or so? Yeah, yeah, doing all right. You know, obviously it hasn't been, well, wasn't the greatest weekend, that's for sure. But but now we've... Uh... You know, we've we've just got to we've just got to move on, and we've got to look forward to our the Italian Grand Prix. Absolutely, and I think the best cure um, for what happened is having a race a week after, and also you know having the F1 race go ahead at Spa on the Sunday. It's probably the best cure we can have for what happened that weekend. But now let's get into previewing the teams. First off, Mercedes, who for me. Uh, did do well at Spa, considering the lack of power they did have. They were so slow on the straights compared to Ferrari. That's not necessarily a bad thing, because Ferrari are killing everyone in a straight line. But I think Mercedes in the race, for example, did pretty well. Uh, coming to Monza, though, because there are less aerodynamic parts of the circuit, I don't see how Mercedes can possibly... Uh, get pole position or even on the front row. And I think winning the race is going to be a very, very hard thing to do. Mainly because Ferrari are gaining so much in a straight line. And also Ferrari will be debuting for them the new Spec 3 power unit in the Ferrari Works car. Of course, Alpha and Haas used it. And Alpha had a failure on it with Antonio Giovinazzi. But I just don't see how Mercedes can really win. The Italian Grand Prix because at the end of the day, even if your car, and we've seen this with Red Bull since 2014, even if your car aerodynamically is great or amazing, if you don't have, you know, anywhere near enough power, you're not going to win the race. You have to have at least enough power to be, you know, in the fight for the win. And I just don't think Mercedes will be. I think both drivers will drive very well, but I don't think they will ultimately get the win. I think they will have a very good race pace um, and I think at times will be faster than Ferrari but overtaking them will be a completely different story. Nib, for the Silver Arrows, after Spa um, and yet after the, you know, the deficit they are giving away in a straight line, do you really see a way Mercedes can win the Italian Grand Prix? Well, there certainly is a way which they can win the Italian Grand Prix. Of course, Qualifying will be difficult like it was at Spa, but the, the the way that they win the race is obviously with them having a better race pace than than Ferrari. Obviously, we've seen at Spa, Sebastian Vettel's, and at the end of the race, Charles Leclerc's tyres um, start to fall off quite significantly to the point where Hamilton was gaining at least a second in the middle sector alone um, to, in the last couple of laps. So that is certainly the way, but the middle sector and the corners at Monza aren't quite as demanding on the tyres as the middle sector um, and, and and a little bit of the last sector, the Stabilos, um, you know, as, as Monza with the Lesmos and Ascari and, and Parabolica. So, you know, I think it will be a little bit easier on the tyres and I think that will definitely help Ferrari. Um, but Mercedes, in the race, you can never write them out. They will always have a great, great car in the race we've seen that at spa but at the end of the day as you said i think that the straight line speed deficit is too much even with drs open they were only about five kilometers now quick in the straight line um than ferrari i think that's what toto wolf said after the race in an interview um so yeah mercedes are really going to struggle but the only way that they can win is with um their better with their better race pace and that they just hope and force perhaps ferrari's tires to wear out Absolutely, but also they need to hope for, say, something similar to 2018, where, of course, Ferrari locked out the front row. They've got to somehow get ahead of one of the Ferrari cars um, at the start of the race and 
hold them off for the first couple laps and then start hunting after whoever the leader is in the Ferrari. But uh, it will be tough. It will be tough for sure. If they do win the Italian Grand Prix, then it will be a monumental race victory for that team for sure. But now let's go on to Ferrari, of course. An emotional weekend for Ferrari. Front row lockout, their first front row at Spa uh, since 2007. And then winning the race at Spa with Charles Leclerc, his first ever race win. And of course, very emotional with the passing of his friend. But um, coming to this weekend, the Italian Grand Prix, I think Ferrari are absolutely going to be on the front row. And I think they'll be on the front row by a mile. I think it could be seven tenths of a second ahead of Mercedes. I just don't see how Ferrari, even if their drivers make slight errors on their qualifying laps, I don't see how they won't be on the front row. Their car is so, so quick at a high-speed track like Monza. I just don't see how they won't lock out the front row. As Nibba said, and as I have said, in the race... Mercedes will come a, a lot more back to them and will be a lot quicker. Um, but Ferrari, with that straight line speed they have, it's really going to be tough for anyone else to beat them. And I think it would be fitting to end this you know, two-week period of a back-to-back -back race for Ferrari. If they ended it off with a victory, it would be fitting for Ferrari to, you know, to do that. Because it has been a very difficult 2019. We have criticised them a lot. And I do want to point out that even though Ferrari did, for the first time in 2019, win a race. And really that weekend at Spa, they didn't mess up at all. That doesn't mean that they are now a mentally strong team or anything like that. It was just, you know, for the first time this season, they didn't cock up. And they actually got the result they should have got back in Bahrain. Um, so... Ferrari, I think, yeah, ending this two back-to-back -back races with another victory would be a great way um, to signal off the European season for them. And I think if they do win the Italian Grand Prix, I think they will have to, and I think they will honestly start concentrating on the 2020 car because I don't really think with the tracks coming up after Monza, there is really that much to gain for Ferrari going forward. But uh, we'll see what Ferrari do, of course. But Nib... Uh, for Ferrari, it's going to be very hard to beat them, and it's really, it's a tough ask, isn't it, for anyone to even possibly think about uh, beating them in qualifying or the race. Well, certainly in qualifying, I don't think that they will be beatable, unless perhaps there's some mixed conditions. I'm, I'm not sure about the forecast um, for the Italian Grand Prix this weekend, but yeah, in qualifying, well, you said that they could even be seven tenths on pole. Well, Charles Leclerc was seven tenths on pole just this weekend at Gone at Spa, which is which was quite remarkable over his teammate, of course, Sebastian Vettel. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the gap is more or less the same. Um, but you've seen even in Spa in qualifying that the Ferrari in the middle sector was actually performing quite well um, compared, like. It was it was actually it was actually relatively good to see that the mis that the Ferrari was actually performing well, um in parts of the track where you'd expect not to be performing um as well, so yeah I, I don't see how Mercedes can <coughs> out qualify um Miss Ferrari whatsoever it's going to be super tough to do that I I I I give them a zero zero point one percent chance of doing so um. Um, you know, and that zero zero point one percent could be that a mistake happening or a reliability issues, and it is Ferrari, so who knows? Um, but yeah, Ferrari they should get they should get the front row front row lockout, and as we've seen during the the, the Grand Prix uh, last week, the the Belgium Grand Prix, just how crucial getting that one two in qualifying was, because if Sebastian Vettel wasn't there to help out his teammate, um you know, and keep Hamilton at bay, it was more than likely Hamilton would have ended up winning that Grand Prix. So it is so crucial that at the start that Ferrari, if they do get a one two, that they keep that one two at least until the end of the first stint. Otherwise, um Mercedes will be licking licking their lips. But ultimately, you know, it's it's gonna be super tough to beat um Ferrari at the Temple of Speed. And trust me, they have all the speed, that's for sure. Absolutely, but I just want to also um, talk about something because a couple of people criticised me for saying in my race review that Ferrari did not have the quickest car in the race. 
Um, if you do watch the race, they didn't have the fastest car because, as Nib said, if Vettel was not there to keep Lewis Hamilton behind, Lewis Hamilton wins the Belgian Grand Prix. No doubt about it whatsoever because Mercedes had a very, very fast car. And Vettel, who didn't have that quick of a pace in the Ferrari car during the entire weekend, really, even though, of course, he was on the front row, he was able to hold back Hamilton and even Bottas to a certain degree and allow Charles Leclerc to, you know, set some fastest laps early on and build a bit of a gap. And that really did. Yeah, exactly. And that really did help Ferrari win the race. If, you know, if Hamilton stayed ahead of Vettel after the safety car restart where Hamilton did briefly get ahead of Sebastian, if Lewis stays ahead, Lewis wins the race, in my opinion, because in the middle sector during the race, Ferrari were nowhere near Lewis Hamilton or Valtteri Bottas in their respective cars. They were absolutely nowhere near, and especially with their tyre wear, you know, being bad at certain points of the race. That's why Ferrari won, because Sebastian held those other two back. So, I think, absolutely, Ferrari did not have the faster car in the race. In qualifying, absolutely, Ferrari had the best car, but in the race, it wasn't the case. But, uh... Yeah, for Ferrari, I think it has become pretty clear that if they are going to win a race um, going forward for the rest of the season, of course they have just won, but if they're going to win again, then as you said, Nib, they've got to have a 1-2 at least until the first and only round of pit stops. If they do, then the, their chances of winning are very, very high for sure. But now... Let's go on to Red Bull, who did not have a good spa weekend. They had plenty of reliability issues. Of course, Albon started from the back because he took on the new Honda Power Unit. And uh, Max Verstappen crashed out after about three corners in the race. Albon did well to finish in P5 and get 10 points. But I think considering what Ferrari did... You know, during the Spa weekend, it was not a good weekend for Red Bull because Red Bull are competing with Ferrari for P2 in the Constructors. Uh, coming to Monza, I'm not expecting Red Bull to do well at all because, of course, they don't have the power with the Honda uh, power unit. Max Verstappen, I believe, will be starting at the back of the grid because he will now have to take on the new Honda power unit and so will Pierre Gasly and the Toro Rosso because both those drivers respective teammates now uh, you know took their penalties for the new power unit back at Spa so the highest placed uh, Red Bull racing driver uh, starting for the race of course is going to be Alexander Albon if indeed Max Verstappen does take a penalty which I think he will but pace wise I don't think Red Bull are going to be anywhere near the top two teams Albon wasn't miles off Verstappen's pace at times during the Spa weekend, but he wasn't, I would say, close. There was plenty of times where he was actually miles behind. I think Albon honestly will do well in the Red Bull to finish P5 in qualifying because I expect the Alphas to be very quick in um, at Monza. I expect Racing Point to be very quick because their car with their new front wing has clearly improved. And maybe Haas as well. So it's not going to be a weekend that is really that good for Red Bull. It, they don't have a chance of a podium. And if Verstappen is starting at the back, he will probably come through to finish in P6 or P5. But yeah, it's not going to be a good weekend for Red Bull at all. Nib, uh, for Red Bull, uh, do you think, like me, this is basically a, a non-weekend for them? Because they're not going to be anywhere near Ferrari and Mercedes. Yeah, I certainly agree with you. It's a, a damage limitation weekend of sorts for Red Bull, even though there isn't really, you know, there's nothing really on the line for Red Bull at this stage of the season. Um, of course, there is um, second in the in the drivers on the line with uh, Max and Bottas, but uh, at this Grand Prix, then then just not going to be quick. You know, the best that they can hope for is fifth and sixth, even with Verstappen having the penalties um, that he's going to have to take. To, um, to put the new Honda power unit in the back of the car. And of course, uh, just to quickly touch on Albon, it was, it's very tough to um to get a gauge of how quick Albon actually was compared to Verstappen because, of course, he had those issues which denied him his final run in Q2. 
which seen him get um, eliminated. So it, it was it was hard to judge the pace. That sometimes he was there, sometimes he was um, quite a ways off. But um, he was certainly might, mightily impressive in his overtakes um, in the race, and that was something that we hadn't seen from Pierre Gasly throughout the whole season. And in his first race, we seen that um, immediately showing those massive bollocks that he has to go all two tires on the grass drs open at three over 300 kilometers an hour um to pass pierre um not pierre gasly certainly not pierre gasly sergio perez to get p5 um quite remarkable overtake by by alexander Albon. so kudos to him for his uh debut performance in the red bull i thought he was quite impressive and I hopefully for Albon that he can uh, produce more of the same for Red Bull in Monza by picking up at least sixth place. Um, who knows if he'll finish ahead of Max, but yeah, certainly, certainly for Red Bull, the most they can achieve is fifth and sixth. Yeah, absolutely, and I think as you said, damage limitation for sure for Red Bull at the Italian Grand Prix, but also. When it comes to the comparison between Albon and Verstappen, I don't think we'll be able to really tell for the first time until Singapore. Uh, because at that race, of course, Red Bull are not going to start from the back. Because they won't be taking a penalty at a race where they know they're going to be very, very good. Um, and the Red Bull car, because it'll be very good, will suit the drivers. So it'll be interesting to see at Singapore how Verstappen and Albon look against one another for sure. But now, let's get into the midfield and start off with Renault. Now, Renault at Spa did very well in qualifying. Very, very surprising that they ended up basically locking out, say, the front row of the midfield pack of uh, cars. Of course, they took their penalties for the uh, new ICE, even though they didn't use their new C-Spec power unit during the, uh, you know, the qualifying or race at Spa. Um, but for Renault, in the race... There was just something off of them. They weren't as quick as they were in qualifying. And that was a surprise because normally Renault are at their best in the race. So I'm not quite sure, you know, what Renault were kind of playing at at times. Daniel Ricciardo's strategy at Spa was awful. I know he had to pit because he got hit on the first lap. But I don't understand why Renault left him out that long. And Hulkenberg, I think, did pretty well as well. I think he also had to pit... Um, quite early on but for Renault at Spa I can't say it was a good weekend because Toro Rosso still outscored Renault uh, during the race um, and also Racing Point did who are now very quickly catching up to Renault. Coming to Monza I don't think Renault are going to be miles away from the front of the midfield but I don't think they will be really up there you know seriously in that fight. I think most likely at the front of the midfield, you're going to see, you know, Raikkonen, Perez, Stroll even, because Stroll is very good at this circuit. As well, Antonio Giovinazzi, because it is Antonio's home race. Um, so yeah, I don't think Renault are in for a particularly great weekend. Maybe they can sneak a top 10 for qualifying, but in the race, if anyone gets in their slipstream... And, you know, gets DRS, I think they are going to be in big, big trouble. But uh, as long as they can outscore Toro Rosso, then for me, that's a good enough weekend. Because they've got to start actually catching Toro Rosso in the constructors. Because they haven't outscored Toro Rosso in a race since Silverstone. And that is clearly, of course, not good enough. So they've got to start, you know, closing that gap down very, very soon, Nib. Uh, for Renault, uh, what do you see for them at the Italian Grand Prix? Uh, do you think they're going to do really anything that well? And uh, yeah, do you think they really need now to start, you know, closing down on Toro Rosso because they're running out of races to really get into the top five in the constructors? Ah, oh, at at this stage of the season, I I I find it almost depressing to talk about Renault. It, it's been a it's been a massive failure of the season, that's for sure. Um, you know, Renault might still score points, but it's still not really good enough. They should be at the front of the midfield um, with the resources that they have and that they have spent. Um, you know, of course, news broke um, last week that Esteban Ocon has got that seat ahead of Nico Hulkenberg for next season, um, which ultimately was no surprise from the languages being coming from 
uh, well, from what Cyril Beeple has been saying all season long. Um, not really surprised. And after his mistake at the German Grand Prix, um, I said whilst we were commentating that it was pretty much curtains for him, and and indeed it was. Um, so, yeah, with Renault at Monza, you know, they might get a point. They might. I, I don't see them doing any better. Of course, that Renault engine, although they will, should be using the new one, um, I don't see them doing doing well. You know, I, I still think that they'll be lagging behind teams even like a Racing Point and, and Alfa Romeo and and still even McLaren and and probably um probably one of the one or two of the Alfa Romeo. So ah, uh, it's just disappointing for me being a Daniel Ricardo fan, of course, and and hearing myself say these say that, like that they're gonna be um towards the back of the midfield and it's not where Renault should be and they, they really need to improve for twenty twenty, that's for sure. But it's not going to be a great Italian Grand Prix for them, that's for sure. Absolutely not. But I will say, at least in qualifying at Spa, there was a glimmer of hope because that performance was not expected. And all I'll say is let's watch out for what happens with Renault at Singapore because maybe, because I know they did bring some new parts, not massive new parts to Spa, but they did bring some. Maybe aerodynamically they have improved. Maybe not massively, but... Maybe they have improved in that area, which it definitely would be a start for this team. Going forward, uh, next up, McLaren. Not a good race at Spa. As you can see with this picture, Lando Norris parked on the pit straight. It, it was a big shame for McLaren because if you look at the pace they had at Spa, they weren't in qualifying or up until race day. They weren't quick they were not quick at all they were nowhere near alpha or racing point really pace wise and even Renault um so when it came to the race and when Norris got up to p5 it was very surprising that Lando dominated you know you know he dominated that front of the midfield you know pack or midfield battle because I didn't think the McLaren was that quick this weekend but it clearly in the race it was uh, but I think what you are starting to see with McLaren from Spa, with them being slower than Renault, is their lack of development is now starting to show. Because as I've said before, they, you know, they've come out and said that they are focusing on 2020 and 2021 a lot more uh, than the rest of this season. So I think that's why their pace at Spa wasn't that great or that special. And I don't think at Monza they're going to be great. I think, you know, McLaren are absolutely going to get a points finish. But it's not going to be as great as it was, say, at Hungary or Silverstone. They're not quite in that position anymore. Simply because they're not developing the car as, you know, as other teams are. And of course, at this type of circuit coming up, they don't have the power with the Renault power unit. So... Yeah, not looking great for McLaren. Um, at least for them, though, they are clearly fourth in the constructors. And as long as they can consistently still finish in the points, I think McLaren will be fine for the rest of the season. Uh, Nib for McLaren, I think basically, as you said with Renault, it's going to be the same uh, type of area for McLaren. But do you think also that the lack of development is now going to start to show in the final few races? Yeah, yeah, I think you absolutely nailed it in your analysis right there. I, I had the exact same thoughts um, earlier in the weekend through Friday and Saturday with McLaren's performance. Um, yeah, you know, it, and it's been a shock that they have been so good without developing the car. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, it was absolute heartbreak for Lando Norris with his engine failure on just at this or just at the start of the last lap or just before the start of the last lap, I should say. Um, <clears throat> but I thought in the race, it was no surprise that they actually, uh, once he got in the fifth, he stayed in fifth because uh, he did a nice way, or he did a nice job of staying out of the, the trouble in the mess of turn one, that's for sure. Just went right underneath them all with using the inside line um, through the source. But he was always going to be quicker than the horses in the race. You know, quite frankly, who wasn't quicker than the horses other than Williams in the race? So I always thought that, you know, Norris, once he was there and Grosjean started to hold everyone up and Magnussen started to fall back through and then Perez started to get up to the back of Grosjean that eventually 
Lando was just going to stream away, and that's exactly what he did. And then they had that uh, had the engine failure, and also not a good day for Carlos Sainz on his birthday with his uh, well, his twenty twenty fifth birthday, retiring on the first lap. But for um for Monza, I I see uh, much of the same really for this weekend. Although I don't expect them to be as high up in the points, or well to be I don't expect him to be up in fifth I expect perhaps a, a seventh or an eighth from from a, one of the drivers and then maybe one of them in the bottom end of the points you know in qualifying I think they will struggle and probably will probably struggle to get into Q3 but in the race they're be, they're, they're very good in the race I'm a clan in the midfield and I'd expect um both cars to probably get some points yeah, I think McLaren, as you said, in the race, they'll be there in qualifying, probably, you know, because of the lack of power they have. And again, lack of development. I don't think they'll really be in there. But now let's go on to two Ferrari powered teams. First off, Alfa Romeo. Alfa was so unlucky at Spa because if they had a totally smooth and faultless weekend, Alfa come away, I think, with Spa with at least 10 points for the constructors because... Both drivers were very quick, and the car was very quick. So it's a real shame Alpha had, you know, what they had. Obviously, Raikkonen getting hit by Verstappen. I think Kimi was not blameless when it came to that. And, of course, Antonio, with his spin, it was a mistake, but he drove so well up to that point. It was such a shame that he did what he did. Um, and, again, and it's becoming a theme with Alpha Romeo that they... <laughs> Pace-wise, they have a very, very strong car, but there are certain races where they will be looking great and they'll come away with nothing somehow, some way. For example, you know, Baku, they qualified 8th and 9th, and of course, both drivers started from the back. You have Hockenheim, where both drivers were disqualified from 7th and 8th, that's 10 points. Um, and then Spa, they should have been in qualifying, I think, you know, 7th and 8th or 8th and 9th. And then in the race, Alpha really should have been, if they didn't have any contact or crashes or reliability issues or whatever, Alpha should have been, you know, 6th and 7th or maybe 5th and 6th. They had a very, very fast car, but they didn't get the result that they, you know, should have got. So a shame for Alpha, but I think at Monza, they will correct that for sure, because I don't think Alpha are the type of team that will just continue that poor uh, form in terms of, the result, I don't think they're going to continue that into Monza. I don't think they're that type of team. I think Kimi Raikkonen will probably end up being in the top eight all weekend. And Antonio Giovinazzi will also be up there because, of course, it's his home race and he'll want to impress a lot. Nib, uh, for Alpha, uh, don't you think that um, they were, in terms of the result they got, they were very disappointing with what they came away with and... It is starting to add up the, uh, these weekends, isn't it? Where they're not quite getting the points they really should get. Yeah, well, of course, they should have got a lot more points. Um, of course, with Kimi Raikkonen, um, obviously, you know, contact with uh, turn one with Max Verstappen where he sustained quite a hefty amount of damage, which really did affect him during the race. And of course, Giovinazzi, um, losing it in the middle of pull on on the last lap, which was um, an odd crash, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, for Alfa Romeo, I, I do expect them to be very quick at Monza once more. Of course, they have the Ferrari, the Ferrari power unit, so they will be quick. And in the race, well, really, if they don't score points with both cars, I think that there would be, uh, be quite a disappointment for sure with um, for Alfa Romeo. So... Yeah, I, I I'd honestly expect a very good solid double points finish for for Alfa Romeo. Yeah, I think as long as you know no errors occur, I think that's what they'll get. And uh, next up is Haas. Now I'm going to quickly move on from Haas because it's you know rinse and repeat with this team. They don't have any good race pace, and also now they have an issue that their current aero spec is very draggy. So basically, they are a Ferrari-powered version of McLaren in 2018. Um, so despite having you know great power from the power unit because of their aero setup, aero configuration, whatever you want to call it, Haas they're not going to be anywhere at Monza. I think maybe at Monza in qualifying they can get 12th or 13th, but in the race. We know the story. You know, they're going to be awful and they're not going to finish in the points. 
and uh, hopefully things can improve soon because this is getting ridiculous how many times we have to sit here and say the same thing over and over again it, it's like Haas don't learn it really is like Haas are not even learning you know how to improve their issues but uh, yeah we'll move on from them and go on to Toro Rosso Toro Rosso was so good at Spa not in qualifying but in the race they were so good in qualifying they had probably had the worst car in the midfield but in the race, they were so, so quick. I don't know what, um, you know, what they were playing at with their, their pace. It was, it was so good. I didn't expect Kvyat to be as quick as he was. I know he did get a bit lucky with the start and avoiding crashes uh, that got him up to P11 by the time the safety car came out. But his drive after that was so good. And for me, again, he was the driver of the day at Spa. Because I know Albon came from the back and got fifth, and Leclerc won, and that was, you know, great. But in a Toro Rosso car that was so slow at Spa to come from 19th or wherever it was at the back to P7 is an amazing result. It's an amazing result, and it showcases again why, for me, Daniel ultimately will be a deserving of a Red Bull seat if he does indeed get it. Uh, Gasly also did very well. Did fall away a lot in the second half of the race, but I thought he did very well as well. But Toro Rosso scored uh, eight points uh, from Spa and outscore Renault again and pull away in P5 in the Constructors. And I think they could really get that P5. And you know what? I'm willing them on to get it because they work so hard and I think they deserve for one year at least to get that, you know, position in the Constructors because... They have had a hard time in the last couple of years, um, and I think they do deserve it. Nib, were you surprised by um, Toro Rosso at Spa, and do you think they can possibly do the same in Italy? I certainly was surprised and uh, very impressed by Toro Rosso's performance at Spa, with Gasly and Kvyat um, obviously both getting points, and especially by Kvyat, I thought he was very good during the race. Um, you know, he was towards the back of... Um, well, he he just did a good job. I I, I honestly can't remember too much of uh, the Toro Rossos during the Grand Prix, even though they were on camera a lot. I don't know why, but they, they did do a good job during the Grand Prix. And at Monza, well, of course, their home Grand Prix, um, being the Italian manufacturer, um, I think that they'll have a solid result. Well, I think it would be um, quite surprising if they did have quite the same result as what they did at... Um, as what they did at Spa, but, you know, still impressive, that's for sure, and who knows, maybe maybe they could do it again, but um, that remains to be seen, but um, certainly impressive by Toro Rosso last weekend at Spa, and, you know, probably one of their drivers will, will, will probably get some points once again. That's the thing, though, I just want to point out, is me and Nib, we've done so many previews in 2019, where we've said with Toro Rosso, They'll be in there, but not, you know, incredible or amazing. But then they go and get a result that is very surprising and very good. They've done it so many times in 2019. And that's why they are P5 in the Constructors. Because they've, in the race, most of the time, they've really produced when it has mattered. And that is a great thing and a very important thing that you know Toro Rosso have been able to do in 2019 because if they weren't as productive in the race in 2019 then they wouldn't be P5 in the constructors they'd be P7 or P8 so yeah great for Toro Rosso and hopefully it continues uh next up racing point i think racing point now we can finally say are finally back to where they deserve to be in the midfield pack because they brought a new front wing as you can see on your screen a new uh, end nose cone they brought uh, to Spa. And it really did improve the car quite a bit. And I think, again, we can say that Racing Point are back in the midfield fight. And you know what? With the two drivers they have who are very consistent and don't really make that many errors, I think Racing Point are really now going to start marching up the constructors' table because Renault and Toro Rosso are not far ahead and Racing Point... I think all around now have a lot better of a car than they had at Silverstone 
or even Canada where Lance Stroll finished in the points. So Racing Point are looking great and I think at the Italian Grand Prix both drivers will absolutely finish in the points because they both go well at this circuit and so does the Racing Point car because if you look at you know this team's history when they were Force India since 2009 which was their first points finish as Force India at Monza where they almost finished on the podium Basically, I don't think it's every race since 2009, but almost every race since 2009, they have been in the top 10 at the end of the race. So they're going to be great, very competitive, and definitely watch out for the team in pink. And Nib, uh, do you agree? Do you think Racing Point are now back to where they you know, deserve to be in the midfield? And do you think they're going to be very strong for the rest of uh, 2019? Well, we said leading into um into the Belgium Grand Prix that you know Spa is a is famously a very good track for for Racing Point, of course, formerly Force India, and indeed it was, of course, a double points finish with both Stroll and uh and Perez getting points. Very very great, good performance by Sergio Perez during the Grand Prix. He was in P five, of course. Um, well, he was in P five after. Lando Norris um, retired for one lap, but he was um, he was very quick in sixth place all day. Did a good job getting through, uh, getting past Kvyat, and I was quite imp impressed. It was the first time since Perez has been in the points for for quite some time. We were just speaking about this a couple of weeks ago, and yeah, it was um, it was good to see um, Sergio back in the points. But yeah, uh, it's you know we've seen teams bring front wings um, as an, a front wing upgrade. And their fortunes completely turned around, and that's what it seems to have been at Racing Point. Of course, I'm referring to Red Bull as the um, as the other example with that when they brought a new front wing in Austria, their pace um exponentially improved. So for Racing Point, I really do think that they um that they're going to have a good a good showing at, at Monza. That's for sure. Um. You know, they, they have a good car in a straight line, even though the Mercedes engine isn't that great. But um, in the corners now, they seem to be even uh, doing a good job. So, yeah, I, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if both uh, racing points uh, finish in the points. Um, but with the amount of drivers I've said should be finishing the points, I think it's about 15 drivers at the moment. So uh, <laughs> someone will miss out, of course. But I think that um, that more than likely Sergio Perez, because, of course, Stroll is a little bit lacking behind. But he did also have a good performance, a uh, better performance than usual. He actually made it out of Q1. Um, and then, of course, he, um, he didn't make it out of Q2. Um, he had a quite a disappointing lap in Q2 there. But... Um, I, I think that Perez is more than likely going to get points at Monza, and that's been it. This has been a fantastic turnaround of fortune for um, Racing Point. You know, their spec B car always seems to produce it, ha has ever since they sort of went along this route in, in 2015. Um, and yeah, it's it, it looks like they've done a great job, have Racing Point. Uh, I think they ju I just called them Force India. I, of course, I meant Racing Point. Um, but yeah, I think that. Um, Sergio Perez at least will score some very good points for Racing Point at Monza. Yep, absolutely. But uh, with Perez, uh, with his points finishes at Spa, that was his first points finish since Baku. And it was the same position in Baku. In Baku, it was P6, and at Spa, it was P6 also. So, yeah, what well, that's what, nine races, 10 races since he uh, scored points. So, yeah, great for Perez to finally do it. And of course, Williams are going to be at the back. They will be closer to the pack than they were at Spa because there's less corners here. And of course, that will help. And I'm sure Williams will try and trim out the wings to be a bit quick in a straight line. To try and be somewhere um, at Monza. But yeah, they are going to be at the back. But now, guys, we are going to get into our predictions for qualifying and the race at the Italian Grand Prix. Let us know in the comments, who do you think will qualify on pole and win the race? And uh, I'll make sure to respond to you guys in the comments. But I will go first. So for pole position and for qualifying, I'm going to go for Charles Leclerc on pole because I think it will carry that confidence through to uh, Ferrari's home race. And I think right now is quicker than Sebastian Vettel in qualifying for sure. 
In second will be Sebastian Vettel for obvious reasons because the Ferrari car is very quick. Um, and in third place, I'm going to go for Lewis Hamilton. And then in the race, I'm going to go for a slightly different top three to what happened at Spa. So Charles Leclerc will win the race simply because I think Sebastian will hold back the other cars long enough if he does eventually get overtook, which I think he will, um, for Leclerc to build a gap and then go on to win the race. In second place, I'm going to go for Valtteri Bottas because I think people are really overlooking the last two races and how he's done. Yes, at Hungary, he had to pit early and he, you know, only finished in P8. But at Hungary, he was actually really quick, especially compared to uh, teammate Lewis Hamilton. He outqualified him, of course. And at Spa, I thought Valtteri did actually very well. He was almost quicker than Hamilton. He was very close to outqualifying Lewis. In the race, Valtteri pace-wise was very strong up until the last 10 laps or so. So I think Valtteri will carry that through and finish ahead of Lewis Hamilton. And then in third place will be Lewis Hamilton. I think what will happen is Sebastian will struggle um, and will be basically deployed to hold up Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton in the race, but eventually those two cars will get passed because I think somehow, some way, Mercedes do beat Sebastian in that car. But Charles Leclerc will win because he'll build enough of a gap to go on and do so. Uh, Nib, what do you think uh, the top three will be uh, for qualifying in the race uh, at Monza? Well, uh, in pole, I think it's going to be. Um... Max Chilton. Now, of course, it's going to be uh, Charles Leclerc on pole. I, I, Max Chilton come absolutely out of nowhere then. Um, but uh, then in P2, for qual in qualifying, Sebastian Vettel. P3 will be Lewis Hamilton. And then in the race, I'm going to go for this exact same result. I think it's going to be Charles Leclerc, Charles Leclerc winning the race, uh, then Sebastian Vettel in second place. Then it followed... Sorry, did I say Sebastian Vettel? I meant Lewis Hamilton. If I did, I honestly don't know. Um, so Leclerc in first in the race, uh, Hamilton in second, and then Bottas in third. There we go. My brain's not in a scramble anymore. That's what I think is going to happen at Spa, at not Spa, at Monza. <laughs> um, oh, dear. But, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Monza, you know, just to, just to get another... Um, a race done um, as soon as possible will be certainly very good and, and much needed. So I'm certainly looking forward to uh, the Italian Grand Prix and hopefully it, uh, it should be a good one um, similar to last year because, of course, that was a very good Grand Prix indeed. Absolutely. If it's like last year, we'll have an absolute uh, great race for sure. But guys, that is it for the podcast today, previewing the 2019 Italian Grand Prix at Monza. Thank you guys for coming along. And uh, being a part of the show and for, you know, interacting in the comments, which I'm sure you guys are. Nib, thanks for coming along. I know it's been a hard last few days, but yeah, thanks for coming along and uh, being a part of the podcast. Yeah, thanks, mate. As always, it's, it's of course, as you mentioned, been difficult for, uh, for everyone. And uh, just thanks, um, a big thank you to everyone in the F1 community for, um, coming together in what has been a, an extremely difficult time and, and understanding um, certain decisions that Chazza has taken in like in terms of uh, cancelling the race watch along. We just felt as if it was the, the right thing to do. And, you know, we want, we, I don't think uh, either of us, either of us would have been in the right state of mind um, to do that. So thank you. Thank you for um, all of your understanding and support. Of course, um, you know, it's a very tough weekend and hopefully we can, uh, we can start to move on. Absolutely. Absolutely. I echo that completely. But uh, just to let you guys know about the content that is uh, coming up. So we're recording this on a Monday. So I believe yesterday there was an Antoine Hubert tribute video. I don't know yet if it was actually a video or a stream because I haven't decided yet. But uh, whatever it was, um, you know, thank you guys for coming along and, you know, paying tribute to that. Uh, but I just want to let you guys know you know, the content coming up. So tomorrow, there isn't supposed to be a video tomorrow, but there are rumours that Nico Hulkenberg might be confirmed at Haas tomorrow. Um, of course, tomorrow is for you guys Thursday. Tomorrow for me is Tuesday because we're recording this on a Monday. Um, so if that is confirmed, then I will do a, a quick recorded video 
talking about it, you know, what I think, and yeah, I'll upload it, and then obviously you guys can interact with that. But when it comes to the race weekend, guys, it will be back hopefully to a full schedule. I will be doing a practice to qualifying and race watch along and qualifying and race review and an incident analysis, willing that my uh, laptop that I stream on, you know, does not mess up. If my laptop is able to do the streams, I will do the streams. I am currently in the process of trying to get a PC because if I get a PC, I don't think these issues will really happen again uh, for live streams. But um, it's most likely going to be the case that I will be on the laptop this weekend. Um, so if, again, if there's no issues, then everything will go ahead as planned. No doubt about it whatsoever. And we will be back, me and Nib, for the race watch along to guide you guys through another Italian Grand Prix uh, in Formula 1 history. Um, and then, yeah, obviously after that, we'll have the incident analysis and a two-week break going down to Singapore. But guys, thanks again for coming along and uh, with us previewing this race. Don't forget to subscribe. Bottom right of the screen, you can do it right there. We do podcast episodes basically once a week, so don't forget to subscribe for that. Uh, again, bottom right of the screen, or click on my channel name, go to the homepage and subscribe and hit the notifications bell. Also, don't forget to hit the like button. Really does help out the channel getting noticed and helps the channel grow. And also, if you do want to see this content continue, then hit the like button. And as well, comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below who do you think will do well and not so well and what do you think will happen in qualifying the race at the Italian Grand Prix. As well, don't forget to join my Discord server, link below in the description. And that is the best place, by the way, for notifications for my videos and streams. And if anything, you know, if there's any tech issues or anything that causes me not to go live at a certain point or cancel a video or stream, then being in the Discord is a very good thing because I will let you guys know in that probably first, uh, you know, as to what is going on. And as well, follow me on Twitter at Chaz6110. Like my Facebook, that's ChazRHDF1 for the Facebook. And as well, ChazRHDF1.com, or ChazRHD.com rather. Make sure to go and check that out uh, for more content like this. But guys, until the Italian Grand Prix weekend, it has been me. Chazer HD, goodbye.